Let's briefly discuss zinc deficiency symptoms that are observed in plants. So what do we see? There, there are six points that I want to make on this slide that when we observe a zinc deficiency symptom, we oftentimes see intervenal chlorosis in young leaves, but it looks different than, say, iron. You can see some of the pictures on this slide here. In grasses or in uh, dicots, sometimes we see muddy green in the center of the leaf, much like what you see in the corn on the right or in the tomato in the center. It just looks sort of muddy green. It, yeah, it's sort of intervenal chlorosis, but it looks muddy green. Um, in corn, it might be a white band, actually. And I'll show you some pictures of that on the next slide. Certainly, we see shortened internodes and smaller leaves. So the corn plant, the picture on the right, it just doesn't look like it's expanding and growing tall like a, quote, normal plant would. And sometimes we see smaller leaves, and maybe we see that in this, this picture of this tomato leaf. We certainly see delayed maturity because of these features, and we see malformed fruit. And the picture in the bottom left actually shows you the interaction with phosphorus that we talked about earlier in this unit. We talked about five factors that affect micronutrient availability. And in fact, in the picture in the bottom left, this is a phosphorus-induced zinc deficiency. So in this plot, this plot received excess phosphorus, 300, I think it says 300, no, it says 80 pounds, I believe a P205 was added to this plot when it probably didn't need it. It induced a zinc deficiency symptom that likely looked a lot like the, the corn plant on the right-hand side of this slide. So some more pictures of zinc deficiency symptoms. In corn, sometimes we see a broad white band near the base of younger leaves. I underlined younger for a reason. And in severe deficiency symptoms, the entire leaf may appear white. So in reference, because I mentioned there's sometimes intervenal chlorosis that occurs, this is iron for the reference on the bottom of the slide. It does not look anything like a zinc deficiency, or another way to state this is that the zinc deficiency doesn't look anything like an iron deficiency. So if you look at the zinc deficiency symptoms in the top two pictures, first of all, on the top right-hand corner, you get this muddled yellow, sometimes it turns white band on younger leaves. And sometimes you see intervenal chlorosis on younger leaves that does not look like anything like an iron deficiency. And in fact, if you perceive or observe an, an iron deficiency, the internodes will not be clumped together, right? They'll be stretched out like a quote, normal plant. But look at the corn in the top left-hand corner. It just looks like it's stunted. It's not, it's not growing out properly. And that in combination with this strange intervenal chlorosis on younger leaves tells you that it's a zinc deficiency. So with that stated, where are the deficiencies observed? They're observed in younger leaves. Interesting. So that tells you that zinc is immobile in plants. Here's some other pictures of zinc deficiency in citrus. And I know we don't raise any citrus in Ohio, but you see a very similar response to zinc and it's intervenal chlorosis or muddled green chlorosis on on newer growth the leaf sizes are just smaller you can see that in this picture on the left hand side a uh, normal plant and the leaves that are larger in the normal citrus leaves versus those that are affected by deficiency symptoms you have this muddled or mottled chlorosis Sometimes it's more specific, but man, it's certainly modeled or, or muddled. And obviously the fruit reduction occurs under zinc deficiency in citrus. And the same thing would happen in any other plant species that we raise. 
And so I know I mentioned this on the previous slide, but is zinc mobile or is it immobile in plants? Hmm. It is immobile because we observe the deficiency symptom in new growth. And so this is another way by which we can identify what deficiency it is. Certainly not nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium because that always occurs in older leaves. So this occurs in newer leaves and you start whittling down the observations and it's a zinc deficiency because of the muddled green interveinal chlorosis and in this case, smaller fruit. The last point I wanna make in this video is the sensitivity. And when we look at sensitivity of the crops to zinc deficiency, you'll note that most of the crops that we grow are um, all over the place, all right? So if you look at, for example, corn, corn can be highly sensitive to a zinc deficiency if the soil is lacking zinc. Uh, wheat falls sort of in the middle. And actually, I almost would say that sometimes wheat should be over here in the highly sensitive. Soybeans is in highly sensitive. Uh, what's low sensitive? Forage grasses, thank goodness if we're raising these for, for animal production. Uh, most of the other plants that we raise on large scale don't really fall in here. I guess peas do, oats do, but they're all over the place, all right? And so one thing that's different about this table as compared to the iron sensitivity table is soybean. And soybean does not fall into all three categories for zinc deficiency or sensitivity.